Hey guys, welcome to Small Mouth Crush. It just hit me today. I need to get a video out on catching monster smallmouth on the A-Rig, okay? It's getting to be that time of year real soon, especially for the boys up north. And I guarantee if your body of water has some smallmouth in it, you're going to want to watch this video coming up. All right, so I love to throw an A-Rig, Alabama rig, umbrella rig, whatever you want to call it. We'll stick to the A-Rig today. And what the A-Rig is, is it basically, it's been around for a number of years now. It's been around forever in the saltwater world. Uh, the Bass Guys, probably 2010, 11, somewhere around there is when it really hit the, uh, the bass fishing scene. Works great for largemouth. It works really good for smallmouth. I implement it a lot throughout the year. Really love to throw the A-Rig in the springtime, pre-spawn. There's also a time once they get offshore and start chasing bait that I'll throw it a lot during, during midsummer. And then of course, fall's an awesome time to throw the A-Rig as well. And it's real basic. Um, it, it's, it can be complicated. There's a lot of different manufacturers out there. I narrow it down to pretty much two different uh, types of A-Rigs that I like to throw. Uh, one being the Flash Mob Junior. It's one of my favorite finesse compact A rigs that are on the market. And then I throw a, a number of A rigs made by a company called Shane's Bait. And their A rigs actually show up in a tube like this. And I've been using these for about three years now and been really impressed with it. It's some serious hardware here. Um, it takes a little bit to throw this thing, but the attraction, the vibration, it does everything you want an A-Rig to do, and that is it catches fish. So let's walk through a standard A-Rig and show you um, how that's all set up. So quite often, those smallies will hit this big Blades of Glory, this huge swim, uh, this huge A-Rig here. It's got a lot of stuff going on. There's times, there's situations where you may be fishing a lake that has a lot of pressure and maybe guys are throwing a lot of A-Rigs. You might want to drop it down to maybe the Flash Mob Junior or for instance, this Mini Blades of Glory is just a step down version from this big one. And this one's really, really nice because it's so compact. You can throw it a little bit easier. It's a little bit better in the wind, things like that. Uh, shallower water as well. You know, if you're on a three to four foot flat, throwing A-Rigs in the spring, uh, especially when those fish move up and they're still in the pre-spawn mode, this one really comes into play. And I'll throw a 3.8, but oftentimes I'll use a, a swinging impact, you know, a skinnier Kitek with a, um, with a lead head on it as well, you know, a 16th ounce or an eighth, and I'll, I'll use that. And some of these lakes, I've experienced a better bite with that skinnier, smaller profile swim bait on the back of your A-Rigs. Uh, there's times when I threw this, I mean, most of the day, scratching my head, wondering why I'm not getting any bites. And it was all because I was using too large of a swim bait. They wanted a smaller profile. And uh, it was night and day difference. So you're really gonna wanna experiment with the size of your swim baits. For smallmouth, I really like the Kitek 3.8s. And then I like the narrower version as well of that. It's just a little more slender, but that's typically going to be my two baits that I start out with and use for the most part. I stick with natural colors as far as the swim bait itself. I really like the Rainbow Shad and the Silver Flash Minnow. Silver Flash Minnow, I, I feel works really good if you have some perch uh, in the system and they're keen on schools of perch because it just has a little bit of green uh, tone to the back and I think it mimics a perch really well. Um, I'll also use a color called uh, Pro Stuff Special that imitates a perch real well. And they also have some chartreuse and a little bit of orange, some black fleck in there as well. So you can experiment with those baits, find out what one's working best for you, and uh, I mean, just have fun with it. So as far as my setup, for A-Rigs, I keep a small box like this. 
ready to go. All what's in here is different size willow, willow blades. There's some Colorado, some Indian style, uh, Indiana style blades in here, but just some silver. And then I do like chrome if it's cloudy and there's different situations where I'll change, but you can really probably do most of your damage with just silver uh, willow blades on it. And I have them in different sizes. So uh, this one here is a size five, a size four. I have some in size three, some smaller ones. I also have some blades that actually have a pattern on it. So uh, these are made by Lindy. This one just has some fish scale, uh, gives off a little bit more flash in the water. You can experiment with that, see which one works best for you. Uh, I really like the Picasso uh, jig heads um, for my swim bait hooks. I also have some, uh, just some other standard black uh, swim jig heads, so um, you can kind of experiment and find out which ones you want. And then of course I have the fake dummy heads as well. So if you want to just uh, screw on a swim bait and not have a hook because you're over the limit on hooks that are allowed by the state, you can certainly grab some of those and use that. And that's pretty much it as far as the box as well as the components. And you're going to want to have some snap swivels, some barrel swivels, things like that. Uh, what's, one, what's nice about uh, Shane's baits is you can actually unscrew right here and take out an arm if it gets too bent and just get that replaced. So you don't have to buy a whole new uh, Alabama rig. You can just take those off of here and replace them because if you're catching a lot of fish and a lot of big fish, I mean your blades are, you know, your wires are going to get damaged and bent and it may not happen in one fishing trip, but after a few uh, you're going to definitely have some issues. So you want to pay close attention to that. You also want to make sure, and it sounds obvious, but you want to make sure your swivels are snapped all the time when you're when you're fighting a fish, things can go, uh, I mean, anything can happen. And I've, I've seen where these will actually come off and, and you can lose fish. So you just want to pay attention. You have a lot of moving parts on here and you want to make sure that they're all working so when you do get that big bite, you can get that fish in. So the A-Rig for me really excels in pre-spawn conditions when those fish are in 10 feet of water or less. And I'll work the bait in a medium retrieve. Sometimes I'll burn it, sometimes I'll have to slow it down, but I always start out at a medium retrieve and just bring it back to the boat and fan cast as many areas that you think are gonna hold fish. And you know, it doesn't take long for a fish to tell you if that's what they're gonna be keying in on and that's what's gonna work. Um, another time of year is right after they get off the beds and they move offshore and they're chasing bait fish, especially in the northern part of the country. Um, when they're keying in on some of the perch, some of the shad, some of those big schools of baits, it works great. Um, obviously, you're going to want, a, you know, if you have some wind and some chop and some overcast, uh, they'll key in a little bit better, but you don't be afraid to throw an A rig when it's dead calm and sunny. Um, there's times when that works as well. And then the last time, you know, when it really works, when it really excels for me is the fall, when they're munching on bait and they're filling up their bellies, getting ready for winter. That's a great time of the year to, to throw an A-Rig. I've had some of my best fishing days on an A-Rig in the fall time. And I'm talking cast after cast of literally just staying in one spot when you're on that big school and you get them fired up and it's just nonstop action. Um, it's a great way to search for fish, find out where fish are. And if things slow down, you can always throw a single swim bait uh, or maybe it's time to switch to a jerk bait or whatnot, uh, depending on the situation. But if you can get away with it, I'd keep that A rig in your hand all day long and just have fun with it. So, as far as storing the A rigs and the containers, I put them all in a soft sided bag like this. A lot of the Shane baits come in the tube, so I'll break them down and put them back in the tube. I'll always have some ready to go rigged up with me. So, I'll kind of clamp them down and I, they do have some plastic sleeves that you can fit those in as well. That way you're not out there trying to make an A-Rig on the water. You got a few to, ready to go that are rigged up. Um, there's no good way to, to really store these. I mean, especially when, you're, when you have them on the rod too, things are going to get tangled up in the boat. They do, again, make some sleeves for that. Um, if you remember to put them on, it works great. I have a hard time doing that. Okay, so as far as my rod and reel setup, uh, I use braid 
on my Alabama rigs. A lot of guys, I shouldn't say a lot, but a few have used mono or fluorocarbon, you know, in that 20 to 30 pound test. I really like braid. I've been using braid with my A-Rigs for as long as I've been fishing A-Rigs. So I don't have a problem. It allows me to make really nice long casts. Uh, this rod here is seven foot nine. You're gonna want a little beefier rod. This rod actually is really light. It's designed uh, for A-Rigs. And so it's super light rod. It has a very long grip on the reel as well. So when you're launching these big baits, it gives me a little bit of leverage on the, on the butt of the rod to be able to give that extra torque to get that bait out there and really swing these baits as far as you can. Gives you a little bit longer time to reel it in and work that area effectively. So I go with braid tied directly to the A-Rig. Um, standard reel's fine. Uh, this one's a higher gear ratio. I think this is eight to one. So, I mean, it just allows me to, to, to gather more line on, on, a, on a bite, especially if they're coming towards you when they hit and they keep coming towards you. Um, a flip and stick would probably work, a Carolina rig rod, something like that's gonna have enough power, but a good enough tip to be able to, to get a hook in that fish's mouth and then play them out. But again, you don't want a rod that's gonna tire you out and that's gonna be heavy, especially if you're throwing this all day long. Uh, so this is a great setup for me. Legally, as far as the amount of hooks that you can legally have on a swim bait, excuse me, on an A-Rig, is going to determine how many hooks you can have on your A-Rig. This one is a standard five hook deal, which uh, I, I believe you can throw a lot down south. My part of the country, it's rare to be able to throw five hooks on an A-Rig. Uh, I'm typically going to be able to do a, get away with three or sometimes two. And so you have to modify these a little bit to be legal and to be able to fish them still and make them effective even though you may only have two hooks as opposed to five. Still not a problem. You can give them the bite, the ones with hooks, and still add, well, you can still add that illusion of a large school of bait fish going by even though you might not have you know, five with hooks, you might just have two, and you can still be able to catch those fish. So here's what I do in states where, let's say you can only use two hooks on an Alabama rig. So this one here is a, a Flash Mob Junior, and what I've done here is I just run two of the swim baits on the bottom arms, and then the other three arms I adjust so they're even, and I just put willow blades on the back of them. And so these two are just going to swim through the water and there's still going to be a lot of flash and they'll still mimic a school of bait fish and quite often or not they're going to come up and grab the uh, swim bait itself and you'll be able to hook them. Now I've run two on this one as well or three. Uh, what I like to do with, with the larger swim baits is I'll put a dummy rig on without a hook. So you can buy some of these smaller heads here that'll put right on the swivel of an A-Rig. And then what you do is you can take some super glue and take your swim bait and basically you just thread it on. And so it still looks like a bait fish swimming by, but there's no hooks and you're still legal for that state. Another thing you can do is just run uh, an extra pair or two of willow blades in place of that swim bait. So it's still giving the illusion, but you're legal at least and you only have two or three hooks. So in a three hook scenario, I would take, and I would take these two off and put willow blades on it. So you'd have willow blades at the front, willow blades up here, and then I'd run three of the baits down below. The long, the long leader here would have a little bit heavier weight. So I like a 16th or an 8th ounce weight head on my A-Rigs. So here's a little bit bigger one. I may put that in place so it actually, it'll, it'll swim a little bit lower in the water column. And you can see all these are, are the same color. I think these are Rainbow Shad Kitech 3.8s. Uh, you may want to go with just a, um, a, a total different color to allow those fish to zoom in and key in on that swim bait. Um, so maybe a bluegill flash, or maybe you want to add a little, a little swim bait with chartreuse in it. 
you can experiment with that. That certainly works. Um, I found for smallmouth, they're so aggressive that, you know, I, I haven't, I mean, I'd get, I typically will get the bites regardless of the color of the swim, swim bait that I have on. But it is something you want to keep in mind if you're having some trouble getting those fish to commit to your A-rig. All right, so if you want to catch some giant smallmouth this year, I would seriously start looking into, if you haven't already, throwing the A-rig a little bit more. Um, when legal, especially in tournaments, a lot of tournaments are won throwing the A-rig. you got to check the regulations with your tournament director if you are fishing a tournament, and you have to check your regulations with the state to make sure you're running the amount of hooks that you can run on a bait. So... If they only allow you to, I mean, don't let that stop you. It'll still catch fish. It won't look as great as a, a five, you know, five swim baits and a bunch of willow leaves going through the water, but sometimes those fish don't want that. Sometimes they want something a little bit more subtle, something that looks uh, a little more compact. So you got to want to mess around with that. Don't be, don't be afraid to throw just two or three on an A-rig. All right, there you guys go. It's all about the A-rig for smallmouth. Now, it works great for largemouth as well. I just don't get the opportunity where I live to throw it too much. It's hard to throw through grass, so you're going to want to be around open water or you know rocky structure, things like that, um, in order to get away with really effectively being able to use that A-rig um, and how it was designed. So for me, the smallmouth, the, where the smallies live, um, it sets up perfect for the A-rig. So it's something I throw quite a bit. I do want to mention I do have that contest for any subscribers as well as new subscribers. Um, I'm going to actually give you guys one lucky subscriber. We'll get a, a couple packs of these Kitex. Uh, we're also giving away some swim jigs and some rattle traps here. Uh, all you have to do is become a subscriber to the channel if you're not already. And then go on my Instagram. You'll see below my Instagram. It's Smallmouth Crush. And basically tag any of my photos on Instagram with one of your buddies. Let them know about this contest. And then go to the contest video, which will be at the end of this video. I'll link up to it. And basically, I just want to know where you're from and what your name is, and you'll be entered in that contest. That runs until May 2nd. So good luck with that, guys. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you guys on the water.